Testing, 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 one, two, three. All right, everyone, we are live. Welcome everyone back to another Friday night live stream. Hopefully everything is working good. We've got good crystal clear picture and audio quality. I will let you know right up front, I am having some problems out of my uh, lapel mic cord that comes up. So there might be a few moments in this stream where you're gonna get a buzz or a crackle. So you may wanna lower the volume on your headsets if you're li listening through a headsets as that can get quite irritating and grind on your nerves. Um, so let's go to camera two check real quick, Jessica, and make sure we're doing good there. Looks like we are. Hello, everybody. Hopefully that's all in focus and looks good over there. And uh, we can go back to the main cam, Jess. And uh, how are you doing tonight, Jessica? I am doing good this evening. Uh, as you guys probably noticed, we did get a fresh coat of snow today. Uh, so that's still blowing in even a little bit here and there. <laughs> Borax for everyone. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, so yeah, lot to... A lot of fresh powdery stuff in the shop. Um, we've been having gale force winds all day and moments of white out up here in the great white north. So um, you'll have to bear with us. Hopefully the stream will stay solid throughout the whole deal. But if you, we do lo lose you in this stream, uh, that will probably be most likely the cause. So let's hopefully everything goes well. We are slotted for about two hours and We've already got some lovely people who have done some super chat, so thank you for changing that sign. It started as white at the beginning of the stream, but there's been three or four color changes already. So um, thank you guys for those that are supporting with the super chats and putting those in there. Greatly appreciate it. If you don't like that color, feel free to change it. One super chat at a time. <laughs> so every time I think about that, I think about that, uh, uh, I believe it's Cinderella with like the little three fairies. Yes, I'm a father of three, two girls, so I've seen the movie a bunch. But, you know, they're like, make it blue. And then I was like, no, make it green, I think it was. Was it green or blue? Yeah, green, pink. No, pink. It was pink. Yeah, make it blue, make it pink. Yeah. No. <laughs> and somebody just did. Somebody just made it blue. <laughs> Thank you, Yamez. Appreciate you. So we have two things. We have a actually quite a bit going on tonight, if you'll make it through this intro. If you guys are watching this on the replay, you might want to skip to about five, 10 minutes in and uh, forging will start then. I have a bunch of punches and chisels we'll be giving away. Let me go over the anvil, Jess. I have some square punches and slitting chisels that I'll be giving away. These were actually one in the last live stream, but I was out of town this week, uh, so I have not been able to get back in the shop to do all the heat treat and everything, uh, but these will be heat treated and out the door, shipped out this upcoming week, along with everyone else's punches and chisels. Uh, but I was able to get these all doctored up here um, from the last live stream, so I'll be sending those out. But we'll be giving some more of these away tonight. We will also, we will also be giving away, you can say camera number two, we will also be giving away some sticker bundle packs. Again, brought to you by Dana Maggiore. Thank you, sir, for those. And with the included sticker, which is the most special one, the year of the anvil. As you all know, we are giving one anvil a month away. One of those little Achayo anvils that you see online, the little dual horns. We'll be giving one of those away a month, as well as some of these other stickers here and door prizes um, throughout, well, throughout the whole year of 2020, so the year of the anvil. So really important sticker, and it goes away after this year. So if you're one of the lucky people that win that, that'll be great. One of the last things I'll be showing off is throughout the next several live streams, I was provided um, from Mr. J.T. Barrett, Drayson's Forge. I was provided some little, I don't know if they can see these or not. Let's see here. Let's hopefully I can do this here. Some little miniature cop, can they see that all right, Jeff? Yeah. I can't see from this angle, but. Uh, yeah, if you take them out of the bag, it might help. Okay. Them Pull them out of the baggie. I'll be giving away some of these little miniature tongs, little copper tongs 
made by Drayson's Forge. Um, he sent some of these so we could give them away this year in the live streams as part of the door prizes. So I think they're really neat. They're kind of a nice little novelty and they function. So <laughs> they actually function as tongs. So I think that's pretty cool. So we'll be giving one of these away um, per stream. So we'll be giving one of those away as well this evening. So thank you. Thank you, JT and uh, Drayson's Forge. Really do appreciate it. And thank you for being a longtime supporter of the channel. So that, that'll be it for the door prizes. That's what we'll be giving away this evening. The next live stream of the month, we will be giving away the little 66 pound Chayo Anvil. Um, so you'll make sure you wanna go ahead and set up your reminders and things like that. Jessica should have a link in the description where you can go and request a set of reminder and it has the date of when that live stream will be so you can be a part of it. I get asked all the time, <laughs> I get asked all the time after these live streams of when's the Anvil giveaway live gonna be? When's the next live stream? We always in every live stream, if you're here for longer than two minutes, you will find out because we repeat it multiple times, you can find out that information when our next live stream will be down in the description down below. She has the dates and all that so you won't miss it. And that's what it's there for. And so far, I think we're pretty well stuck on the time of 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that time has not changed yet. <laughs> yet. So, All right, Jess, I want to take a few questions and um, comments real quick because the signs has changed colors once again. The and the yeah, the battle of the signs. Um, I want to go ahead and get some get some questions in here and then and then we will begin where we left off. We'll finish where we left off. All right. Um, yeah, just starting off, uh, those of you that were in here early, I noticed uh, some people were in here up to 30 minutes early. So just kind of getting the chat started, getting it warmed up. Uh, we'd like to thank the Super Chatters. Um, we had a $10 Super Chat from Aimless Adventurer, that was the yellow one, that said, all right, let's, let me get this started. So yes, you did, you got to start it off right, right away. That was followed um, with a Euro Super Chat from Gordon Farmer, a $20 Super Chat from Ethan Phillips, $1.50 from Yamez at Island Metal Forge, and Stephen Watkins with a $5 Super Chat who said, oh, just jumped away, give me a second, who said, uh, Minion Smithy in the house. Woohoo! Well, thank you all. Thank you very much for the Super Chats. Greatly appreciate that. And hope, how, how's my hat? Does it look good? How's my hat? It looks nice? Okay. Yeah, yeah, they, they were impressed with the hat. Good, good. So, um, I was telling Jessica, I said, I might look goofy, but it's better to be warm and goofy than pretty and cold. So, <laughs> so I'll take the hat, um, especially until I get these boards. I gotta do something with these things soon. Um, trouble with it is, is by the time I actually do something with these, it'll probably be spring and I won't need it anymore. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's like, all right, it's a little on the ridiculous side when you work in, in here and you got snow stuck to the side of your face. So um, thank you for the Super Chats. There's more side action going on. Oh. <laughs> Any questions with those Super Chats, Jess? And we'll get going. Um, one of the questions, let's see, the yellow one was from Aimless Adventure, who says, this color matches the forge. Uh, yes, it does. Um, You'll be, even to see it, be able to see that even brighter as the evening progresses and gets a little darker outside. Uh, the next one was from Troy Roush for $1.99, who says, when do we come up and put siding on that barn? <laughs> as soon as I can afford lumber. <laughs> I, I, I might just put out like a call to action, have like a, have, have a barn day, you know, like to put siding up. That would be a good thing, huh? Yeah. Like, yeah trick everybody into coming up like come forge with Roy yeah come forge with Roy that's gonna happen you all show up they're like oh by the way we're put we gotta put new siding up first so um, but yeah the lumber is quite expensive it's about 32 feet to the peak and we are um, 40 feet deep I think it is yeah if I remember correctly yeah that's right yeah 
I don't know why I don't know that. Some, I've done a lot of math today, so get over it. <laughs> a lot of good stuff that way, so. But yeah, a lot of lumber. It takes a lot of lumber to cover that big old beast uh, on that side, and uh, that's quite costly, quite costly. So we'll work at that, we'll save up to that, you know, whenever I'm not giving away tons of anvils, huh? Yep. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's go down to camera number two, Jess, and I wanna showcase where we're at now. Hopefully this can be seen. Again, I've only got like a two inch screen to look at, so does that look good there? Yep. Okay, so what I've basically done is I went ahead and took the legs that we prepped after we forge welded on our little flower here, if you will. Hopefully you see guys can see that. I went ahead and cleaned up those joints with a monkey tool. My tenons here. I went ahead and got nice flat across there with the tenoning tool, the monkey tool. Was able to do that and then I took a measurement of what that was. Turns out it was 15 64ths, so not quite quarter inch. And I drilled 15 64ths holes in the appropriate hole locations to where I can make this a three-legged endeavor here. So that's what we've got. And then I also countersunk it. That's basically it. That's going to end this project is just by peening these into place. I might, I'm gonna put the three legs through there you want to check these to see how they stand. Make sure everything's kind of fitting where it's supposed to be. Sometimes what fits in one hole won't fit in another, so you need to kind of adjust and play with your legs a little bit to see what sits nicely. But then that sits really nicely and sturdy, and uh, that should definitely hold up pot racks. One thing we may do is we may put this in the fire and just kind of clean up peening these a little bit just to get one nice even surface finish. Uh, when we're done. One nice scaled up finish. It, it's a kind of a good way of doing that. And we could also rub that down. I'll do that later where I will rub that down with some, you know, boiled linseed oil. Do a hot thing with some boiled linseed oil and that should be a done project. Right now the boiled linseed oil is frozen in the shop so I'd have to warm it up. <laughs> but there we go. What does everybody think of that so far? where we've got to. What will you be doing uh, with the legs? Are they, are you gonna be forging on them additionally or that's gonna be kind of the finished, um, how you have them there other than riveting them? So what I'm doing for the legs is back on my mic. Is it back on my mic? Is it on camera number two? Okay, what I'll be doing for the legs is I've decided not to do anything else. I've decided to just leave these plain. Um, again, with kind of traditional colonial work, it really was an emphasis on, I, I guess, minimalism. You know, people had a little bit of money to make things somewhat decorative, but they didn't have a lot of money, you know, so it was more about the practical function. Obviously, they wouldn't win as far as having a flower in the center of this. This would just be maybe some simple triangle, you know, some triangle shaped points that would come out in here on most of your colonial trivets that you see um, and then would have been riveted on. So uh, riveted or forge welded on. So this is already a bit more fancy than that. So I've decided to leave the legs plain. I will, however, after they are peened down, there's always a little bit of adjustment. I'll have to look at, put it on a flat surface and check for height all the way around to make sure we don't have a tilt to it and then you know clean up by filing down whatever your high leg is. With three legs, you won't get any rocking, but you can still have a high leg that's giving you some tipping or, or things like that. Um, so that's just some of the adjustment. But as far as the decoration and things goes, I've decided to move on with other projects than go too crazy with decorating on these and go with a slightly more minimalistic design. So, so that's what I've decided. So let's go ahead and move on. With all of my legs installed here, I'm going to press down and I'm going to use a light little cross peen hammer. And I'm just going to start on one of the legs. And I'm just trying to take and get this to peen out.
You want to be careful not to do too much at once. If you do a bigger hammer, you have to be careful that you don't do too much with a big hammer at once because with as small as those little tenons are, they can fold versus peen. Okay, so start with a light hammer and then you can always set it more with a heavier hammer. So we're just peening this on around. Don't peen it too much from one direction. Make sure you peen it from a bunch of different directions so you keep it round. And before it's too snug, you want to make sure it's pointing out in the right direction. This, I've decided to go diagonals. Can they see that okay, Jess? Okay, I've decided to go out diagonals with it. Now I can go ahead and set that leg with the heavier hammer and it does a lot better. Now, one thing, you'll notice that there's a rivet head on top here. Now I've got that peen down, that I'm actually going to file off and then I'll re, you know, I'll re-temper color it. You could leave those up, but as I said before, we want this to be a nice flush experience for our pan. We don't need the additional three points of contact here so it gets all wonky on us. Hopefully that makes sense. So that leg is driven on there nice and tight. And then we're just going to switch over and do the next one. Look at it, make sure I'm somewhat happy with it. I am. Rotate it a little bit and just drop one of the legs. That's always great. Grab my little leg that dropped. Oy. Put that in there. Put it back where it belongs. What is the diameter of the piece? The finishing diameter. Let's go ahead and find this out. I was originally shooting for a six inch outside diameter and I got close. I got to about five, let's, let me look at it here. I got to five and a half inches. So it didn't quite go as far as I wanted. Um, again, I was just eyeballing everything to begin with, but we got to a five and a half inch diameter uh, piece there. So not ideal. It's not what I was really wanting, but it's kind of what I ended up with. Um, if, if you will. So sometimes you just got to take it and run. <laughs> you got to take what you can get and run. That's kind of the danger if, you, if you're just eyeballing it. If you're just eyeballing the piece, that's what, you, that's what you'll run into is that sometimes you don't quite get what you're looking to, looking to get out of the piece. So just something to bear in mind when you're working on your project. If you're wanting the piece to be accurate, you need to measure. And then give that a little bit more tap with a bigger hammer. Now it's down. Reset this other leg too a little bit. Those are all nice and tight. Now for the last leg. We'll get that rotated where it looks good. Looks about right. And we'll continue. Questions, yes. Sure, uh, Drayson's Forge says, Roy, there's a rivet trick. Center punch it before peening, swells the shank a bit to help it stay in place while peening the head down. Yep, that's a, that's a good trick in certain circumstances. It's a bad trick in others. If you, if you, we can go to main cam real quick. 
if you center punch it in the center to do that, sometimes that will leave a remnant. Since I'm trying to file this clean, if you drive it down too deep, there's a danger of doing that. If you drive your center punch too deep, you may not have, a, you know, you may not have enough material there to file away and get rid of that dot in the center. So um, that works good uh, if you need to, if it's in a non, visible location, right? If it's not going to be in a visible location, that's certainly a good way of doing that. Uh, I know when I worked with Tom Latine, we did some, when we were doing some lock work, there was some certain ways that we would do that to take and hold in. Um, it was kind of like basically putting the wards in the ward box of the lock. You would, you know, chisel or basically center punch one side of the cut, the cut that you just made to hold the piece in. So you'd center punch this way and center punch that way and it would hold it and you're never gonna see it because it's gonna stay inside the lock. So um, yeah, that's definitely one way of doing it. Uh, but if it's gonna be on top of a piece, just be careful that you don't, don't go too deep. But yes, great advice though. That is one way of doing it. That would work good. All right, there we have it. Things put together. Of course, you'll have to always do a little bit of adjusting. We could certainly do that. And it'll just take a little bit of finessing, but there you have it. There's our finished bit. Of course, this isn't the only project we'll be working on tonight, but I just wanted to finish this one up so you guys can see the finished result. Hopefully that looks good. Everybody can see it okay. There's legs sat on. One other thing I'll mention is you do want to ease off the corners. If you're going to have a square bar here, you want to ease the corners off just like you would do a hammer face. So this way it doesn't sit there and scratch up a person's table when they set it down on it. But there you have it. Hopefully that looks pretty good there. And questions and super chats. People coming up with them. Questions. That was Yamas. He uh, he went to change it green. So yes, it's green now. And Make Jeremy. <laughs> he says, let's go green. Also, Jeremy Pitts, thank you for the $2 super chat. You changed it just before Yamas did. It like, came in uh, nearly at the same time. <laughs> so thank you both. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Uh, also, somebody asked a little bit earlier about uh, three legs versus four um, and why you preference the three. So with four legs, it's not quite a trivet, is it? Oh, trivets, try, um, it, it's, it's kind of in the name, kind of implied. Um, the, the reason why they use three legs isn't just out of pure laziness and not wanting to put a fourth leg on there. You certainly can do that, but a, a three-legged trivet ends up self-leveling itself. So you can't, it won't be rocky, right? Like, so if you try to do four legs and you try to get them all perfectly even, but then you set it on an uneven surface, what happens? It tips towards whatever leg is hanging up in the air. As where three legs, there's always three points of con, that there's those three points of contact and it's less prone to do rocking. Obviously, if it's on a really weird surface, it might still rock a bit, but for the most part, if it's on a fairly level surface, three legs are better than four when it comes to uneven surfaces. Now, if you think about it, a lot of, a lot of stuff in, you know, colonial times were on brick hearths, brick floors, things like that uneven areas when it came to cooking trivets 
you know, for these type, these are just like a pot trivet that you would set a pot on on a table. You know, you're talking difference in, this in height on wooden boards, you know what I mean? Because it was a plank top table or something like that, or it might have been a hued surface. And just three legs tend to balance better than four. So that's the reason why for the three legs. Now, of course, you can go with four legs, um, but uh, predominantly it's three legs for that purpose. So hopefully that makes Makes, makes sense that way. Set that out of the side. We got that done this evening. Back up in the main. Where are we at the main? We are at the main, yes. There's um, a couple more super chats. Uh, it just changed again, yes. Oddwood Forge, thank you for the $2 super chat. We're going blue because Roy hates blue. Hee <laughs> hee. Um, actually, Roy's favorite color is green. So <laughs> uh, before that, Neil Graham, thank you for the $5. He had changed it green, but it had already been green. <laughs> and then prior to that, um, is a little bit ago, there was a super sticker from uh, two of them from Rodney Hendrickson, $2 super stickers. Um, it's a dancing pair with a headband that says, hey, you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Appreciate that. Thank you for the super chats. Always welcomed. Always very well appreciated. Um, we are attempting to constantly do better and better at these live streams and have better and better things to give away. There's also some neat things coming in, hopefully, uh, here soon from some people who've decided to donate some tools. So that's awesome um, to do as our door prizes. That'll take a little bit of the pressure off of getting these, getting these little uh, punches and chisels made. I worked on some dies this week right as I got back because I had to slam out these things. Um, I worked on some dies for the power hammer that it will make the punch and chisel action a lot easier. I might do a quick video on that at some point this upcoming week. But uh, yeah, thank you all for doing the super chats on the sign there. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. Um, but yeah, so we're always trying to improve in those super chats, that's exactly what they go towards. They go towards helping out this show be at the level of quality that it is. It pays for the heat and Jessica's a uh, little heater over there. <laughs> and uh, it helps pay for everything in the forge. So we really can't uh, say thank you enough. Thank you to everybody who supports us on a regular basis. It really does mean a lot to us. Um, I know everybody says that. There's billions of YouTube people you could watch that will all probably tell you the same line. Um, but I hope that it's felt here and that I hope that it is it really rings home is true. If you stick around long enough, and so this is your first time with us, you'll know that we don't really change, do we, honey? Not much. Not much over the last three years that we've been doing this. I mean, we've grown somewhat as people and, uh, and things like that and lost our minds and <laughs> do crazy things like sit out in 20 degree weather and, and, and do live streams. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if they watched the Christmas live stream, yeah. You would have never caught me, de caught me dead doing that three years ago, but I'm loosening up slowly. I'm loosening. Uh, I'm slowly being turned into a round peg in a round hole versus a square peg in a round hole. So you can't forget the, yeah. the, sh the, the shoulder shuffle, yeah. No, I got Jessica to do it, but I'm not going to do it. So uh, thank you all. Thank you all very much. So um, with that being said, I want to go ahead and give away a few things, Jess, while we're at it, just to start with. And then I'm going to go into our project that's going to be, well, for the next however many live streams it takes to get it done. We'll get into that in just a minute after we do some giveaways. All right, so tonight I'm going to give away two slitting chisels and two square punches. And so we're going to start with a slitting chisel and a square punch. And we're going to give away the slitting chisel first. We can go down here. Camera number two. We're going to give away the slit and chisel first, and then we'll give away the square punch. Okay? All right. So you all know how this works. Just go ahead and comment in the comment section if you'd like to win one of these. And uh, must be over the age of 18. All contest rules. We'll ship these anywhere in the world. There you go. And uh, yeah, that's it, right? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Drum roll. All right, our very first winner this evening is Lisa Holden, who says me. 
Ha ha! Congratulations, Mrs. Lisa, Miss or Mrs. Lisa Holden. Congratulations. Hope you enjoy these. Nice slitting, nice little slitting chisel. All right, set that aside. All right, now we're going to go ahead and give away this little square punch here. And go. All right, our winner for this one is Robert Job, who says please. Robert Job, congratulations. You won the square punch. Again, all you guys got to do is get with us with your contact info. You go to the contact link in the description. You contact us, send us an email with your address, that whole jazz, and we will ship this out to you. So congratulations. Thank you very much. And you guys will get to see some more giveaways as we go along here, uh, some more door prizes. Uh, where was I going to say? I have one thing I wanted to say about that. I can't. Yes, I wanted to talk about last week's stuff a bit more. So uh, last, last weekend, I was out of town and I was getting prepped for a forge welding intensive. I went down to Tillers and I taught a uh, two day forge welding class, forge welding intensive. And so therefore I was not around and I got back. <laughs> no, I got back and once I got back into town, the beginning of this week, I said, okay, I'm ready to go. And I don't know why I didn't look at it, that the chisels and punches that I made last week, I thought they spark tested out as high carbon. I've been using some scrap. I've been using scrap high carbon steel. And somehow I snookered a bar in on myself that was not high carbon steel. It was just mild steel. Well, I thought it forged relativistically easy under the power hammer. But uh, anyway, so I forged up a bunch of these punches and chisels and it turned out they were all mild. So um, that put me behind the eight ball, <laughs> so to speak. So I had to redo, and these are definitely high carbon steel because these are coil spring. I made sure I cut them from coil spring and uh, I'll have to re-go through my high carbon steel, steel barrel and uh, recheck everything, make sure that I've actually got high carbon steel on every single rod. So we don't make that mistake again. But uh, yeah, so it was just one random piece of steel in there that was mild steel and wasn't high carbon steel. So shucks be the darn it. I put a lot of work into those. I even heat treated them and everything. <laughs> I hardened them and I, I went ahead and did the heart hardening step. And then um, I did like a one step hardening and tempering and, it, and then went and checked them and they were dead soft. My <laughs> they, were, they were dead soft. Rolled over the first cut I tried to make. So. Um, yeah, what can you do? So anyways, so that's why those are delayed, but they will be heading out this week because now I'm sure that they are high carbon steel. So that's, you'll be good to go, promise. Plomises, plomises, right? <laughs> so anyway, so yes, thank you everyone. And also anybody who's doing super chats, as most of you already know, if you're new here, you get your name added to that front pre-roll credits. It's just our way of saying thank you um, for all the support. So you get to have your names and lights. It changed. And <laughs> you, get to, you, you get to take and have uh, you know, your name there at the beginning of every video. So um, just thank you. Thank you for that. Any questions before I go on with our project now that I can answer? I know there's some super chats that came in. Uh, let me check here and make sure my microphone's live. There we are. All right. Um, yes, we had a couple of super chats. There was, let me scroll down a little bit here. Uh, James Jones sent one of the green ones. Uh, he said, good evening from Black Hand Forge in Butte, Montana. Good evening. Yeah, you're probably getting a little bit of snow there too, if I would guess. Uh, Island Metal Forge turned it yellow. He said, but orange is fire. And I thought it was pronounced Trive. Trive? Trive. I don't know. I haven't heard it pronounced that way, but maybe some people do call it that, Yamas. So I'm not sure. And then there was also a question. Let me go back to it. Uh, Michael Duncan says, correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought mild steel could be case hardened. So, uh, great question. First of all, thank you, everybody. I've never heard Trivet as a 
as a word there, yamez. I've only heard trivet. So I don't know. Um, might be uneducated in that department myself. But maybe one of our foreign friends there could let us know who's in England, who's existed longer than America as a country as a whole. So maybe they could say what it is exactly. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it's just trivet. Or at least that's how we pronounce it here in America. I'm talking while I'm drawing this in. I know you guys are thinking you're missing something. I've decided it wasn't, it wasn't bright enough. I needed to brighten it up with some soapstone here. I got two things going on. I decided I needed to brighten the things up a bit with soapstone so you guys can see what's going on. Also, um, what was the next question, Jess? There was a question there. Also, there's a question from Junior D who says, does railroad ties, are they good for chisels? Okay. Um, railroad rail can be good for chisels, punches, hardy tools, things like that, as long as it is a high carbon rail track. I know I've got one here that is wrought iron, so that wouldn't make a very good uh, tool, <laughs> so to speak. So I've got some that's wrought iron, some of the, most of the more modern rails is probably gonna be your better bet for making tooling out of. Sometimes you can find the older rail, just spark test it, and if it comes off with a lot of firecrackery sparks, it's a high carbon steel, and you should be able to do uh, something with that as far as a chisel or a punch. Um, and there was one other question, I'm sorry, I'm already admitting it. Case hardening. Mild steel can be case hardened, but you need to remember that case hardening is a surface endeavor. It's not a through piece endeavor um, without a lot of headache and work to get it a through piece endeavor. One really good video to check out on that that had a lot of side by side comparison testing uh, is Click Spring here on YouTube. If you haven't seen him, he does a whole like case hardening thing where he's trying to replicate files or the way that they might have made files back in the day um, or tooling. And he does a case hardening bit there. So you can watch to see what's involved there. In the modern day, modern day and age we live in, it's really not worth it to have to do all the case hardening and uh, things like that. It, it's just not, it's not advantageous when you can go down and buy you a bar of it. Um, and for the amount of time, heat, energy that you have to put into the system just to get something that is hardenable then um, that you can turn into a tool unless you were just in dire straits and you really, really needed it. So um, yeah, so that's my, that's my answer on that. Yes, you can case harden mild steel, uh, but again, it's a surface level treatment to varying degrees. Watch Click, Sp Click Springs videos on that, and he's got some really good things where he snaps them and he shows you kind of how far the hardening went in over periods of time, different lengths of time. Really great videos on that. Right. What else we got? Anything else? Um, yes, I was just gonna say if they had answered about a pal um, trivet, and here in America we call it trivet, but in France they do call it a trivet. Yeah, I figured as much. I mean, in, in different languages, yeah, they're going to call it different things. So um, depends on where the origin was. Was it in France? Where, where was the origin of a, you know, trivet or trivet? I'm sure they kind of thought of the same thing <laughs> at similar time periods. So in France, it was trivet. Probably England, it was trivet. Here was mostly English that came over here and settled the United States of America, so um, trivet. That's what we call it here. Call it what you want. If you want to be fancy with the pinky out, call it a trivet. <laughs> and then if you're just a hillbilly like me, well, it's trivet. Water here. All right, one other question. Uh, he had asked us earlier, Jacob Weiser said, how can you avoid splitting steel when cold peening? Secret, secret sauce to that. Great question. Um, this is actually very seldom asked and talked about. So great question. I like that. I like that kind of question. The trick to not getting splitting cold peening, so getting splitting when you cold peen a rivet head, 
is to pre-soften that rivet head through fire. You have to heat it up and then let it normalize. Do it like a normalized cycle on it. So you bring it up really nice hot, pretty yellow, if you will. <laughs> bring it out, let it cool down, do your cleanup work on it, things of that nature. And then it should peen nice and soft for you. Uh, it's similar to annealing a piece. Um, sometimes that's used in mild steel, like, oh, I'm annealing it. You're not really, I mean, you could stuff it in a bucket of ashes, but it's not really needed. Just bring, bring it up to heat, set it off the side of the fire. And all of my components, I do that too if I have rivet work to do or peening work. That just enlarges that it makes the grain structure more regular. And so therefore you don't have a big spongy grain structure that ends up fracturing when you start peening it. It makes the grain structure more densely uh, packed and therefore you don't have that. So that's probably what's happening on the inside of the rivet or the metal and why it cracks in the first place. You have to know that when you draw out a tenon, you're making a lot of stress. You're creating a lot of stresses in that tenon joint. And if you don't, if you're cold working it afterwards, uh, you're, you're just gonna be working more stress into the piece and that's where you get the cracking and the chipping of it. So put it in the fire, bring it up to full temp, let it cool back down naturally, and then it can be cold peened uh, at leisure to a great degree. And you'll see that it'll move, it'll start moving really good at first. And then as it starts getting hardened back up, you'll start seeing some fraying around the edge if you have a lot of cold peening to do. You will notice eventually it will crack or chip around the edges um, if you peen it too much. So, uh, but as long as you don't have that far to go, like in our trivet example here, go to camera number two, Joss. I just need to peen out enough material to fill the void of my countersink because this is gonna get filed off. So I didn't have a lot, but if you needed a big domed head rivet, you're gonna to need to do that hot versus cold. Um, if you need a lot of material to move and asking it to do a lot, you'll need to do it hot versus this, it was just cold peened because I just needed to fill a little void and then I can file that off. But yeah, that's how you prevent cracking on those. Good question. All right, we ready to go? Yes, yeah. All right, I don't know, can they see from this direction? All right, so the project. Shaboom, can they see that? Good on camera? Looking good? Yeah? Look like a big project? Not really. <laughs> Fairly small job, um, but I think it'll be neat to do this. Um, so basically what I'm making is I'm making just a decorative sign bracket. Now, this could very easily be a plant hanger. You could make it whatever you want it to be. It could be a plant hanger. It could be a lantern hook. It could be all sorts of stuff. Uh, the, main, the main thing that I hope to demonstrate over the next couple weeks as we're working on this project in the live streams is kind of how this simple form, and this is very simple, this is a very simple design, how this simple form can be turned into a lot of different things. So this simple form, if you can get this L-shaped deal to work out really well with some sort of scrolly bits in the center, you can make this as elaborate as you want. You can make this component that goes against the wall as elaborate as you want. And you can even make this here the arm that goes out for the sign bracket as elaborate as you want. Um, you know, you could just keep adding elements to the piece and make it super ornate, or you can take things away and have a more lighter and airier design. Um, but yeah, so I drew this up today, got it all sketched out. We have 18 inches here or 450 millimeters. And then we have a 24 inches here or two foot across or 600 millimeters. And that's gonna be the basis of our design with just a basic squirrely uh, C scroll in the center of it. Uh, so it's fairly basic, but it will require doing definitely a few traditional techniques to make the scroll work, work out okay. Um, so we'll go through that. But today we're gonna to be working on the base plate, the part that's gonna actually go against the wall. So that would be my suggestion that you start on that first and foremost, if you're gonna undertake this process together. Then you work on your length portion, then you have something to attach all the scroll work to. So 
definitely we'll start here then we'll do this next week this the uh the arm that sticks out from the wall and then the final week we will do the scroll work uh, on this piece we will do the scroll work this branching scroll and it'll involve some uh, forge welds and some pinning of the scrolls uh, to do the branching scroll so i think it'll be a an interesting and entertaining learning event hopefully it will what do you think jess anybody excited about it in the comment section or are they like this is lame i'm not getting my money's worth i'm out of here um somehow we got onto a little sidetrack about kilts but but besides that uh yeah somebody mentioned you could also make a pair of uh, shelf brackets also with that same uh, 90 degree style yep very much so um you can make a just by turning this end up out here at the end you can make a really nice shelf bracket um, or turning it down scrolling it down there's a lot of different things you can do this shape is a really basic and useful shape you can use this in a lot of different stuff um, even if you don't even if you don't do it like this for a bracket this could easily be the corner leg of a table so you know just exclude this top portion here and it's a corner leg of a table so very simple but it has a lot of different applications you can let your mind go wild and go do it in your own shop what i do hope to show case in the next couple live streams is how you can go out to your shop you can sketch something and you can just get to work get out start making scrolls start making the individual pieces work on it one component at a time assemble the thing be done with it get it out there for sale get it out there for christmas whatever you're doing um, you know and you're and you're good to go that not everything has to be so critical it's not critical you know, this scroll might change a little. I'm gonna to try to fit a scroll exactly to the way I've got it drawn here, but if it's a little in or a little out, I might decide I like something a little bit better. Again, the point is, is to draw something, get creative, and go make it. You just go make it and, uh, and uh, you know, don't worry about it. In your little mini kilt that you're wearing in the middle of March. <laughs> I'll just, I'll just say this, I am very anti-kilt. So uh, like, I've met a lot of people, it's, it's a trend, a lot of guys are wearing the kilts nowadays, but let's just say take a shower. If you're gonna wear a kilt, just guys, it's 90 degrees out, you're trying to air things, take a shower. For the love of everything that's righteous in this world, take a shower. <laughs> Well, on, on your side anyway, you don't even wear shorts, so you do have really, really white legs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got, I've got flux covered legs. So <laughs> if you see me, if you see me in a pair of shorts, either something's gone horribly, horribly wrong, <laughs> or I'm trying to get them just a little bit of color, <laughs> a, a, bit uh, a bit above translucent. <laughs> I basically wear pants all the time <laughs> as a general rule. So yeah, so that's the project that we'll be working on. Any questions about the project, Jess? Before we get going, move on to the next step. No, not yet. Super chat. That was Yama's. Yes. <laughs> oh. What you got going on there? Okay. All right, we on my mic or yours? Good, all right, just making sure. It has been like a whole two weeks since we've done this and usually we, we practice a bit more but we were running down to the wire again for this one. <laughs> so we just got live barely. We had one test live stream and then got in here and got this done. Usually we take all of Friday to practice and test and, and make sure everything's set up right and audio and yada yada and then things still don't come out right so it's really hairy carry when you step out here two hours before you're supposed to go live and you know you, you didn't do it yet so all right well if there's no other questions with that and stuff i'm going to showcase what we're what the bar i've got marked off so this here is going to be our wall piece it's cut 18 inches or 450 mil 
Um, I also measured two inches in from each end or 50 millimeters in from each end and we will be splitting these out and drawing these legs out into scrolls themselves. So this is going to have kind of a, a whispery, flamey kind of detail at the top and at the bottom and then the rest of the stuff we'll get into as we go. But we'll punch a hole, we will punch a hole for where the uh, main arm bracket goes through and maybe give this thing a bit of texture this evening. We'll see how far we get on this. Uh, it is quite a bit of work to go after that, demonstrate, give away items, things like that. But maybe we'll get this whole piece done. If we don't get this whole piece done this evening, it will be in the next stream that we'll finish this up and we'll go on to the next piece. So, hope that makes sense. Uh, yeah, 18 inches or 450 millimeters, and it is two inches wide or 50 mil wide. So we'll try to get that nice and hot, and then we'll split this, which it won't be hard to get it nice and hot. Won't be hard at all. All right, I was able to pull Yamez's comment back up. Uh, he had said, I was making a bad joke, no need for seriousness at my nonsense about the trouvé. <laughs> so yeah, there's some other jokes that rolled off of that, but um, that was pretty funny. <laughs> uh, also, thank you for the two most recent Super Chats that came in. One has a question and um, one is from Just Gonna Get Better. He says, woohoo, get it going. And also from Rick Nicholas, uh, $2 Super Chat, who says, why not hot peen the rivet legs? Okay, so first of all, thank you all for the Super Chats. Thank you for supporting the stream. Do appreciate you. Um, the reason why I didn't hot peen the rivet legs is because I do not want my rivet legs to get any shorter. If, you, if you're going to hot peen them, you need to leave it long so you can cut them all off at the right height later on. Uh, that's just the direction I chose to go. Hot peening, you don't get any additional benefit, and in fact, you kind of, you're fighting against the clock, you know, the thing's cooling down and you're trying to get things, you know, aligned and ready to go. And on little fine finesse, fussy work like this, it's just easier to do the cold painting. Um, later on, you can kind of hot finish it if you want. But again, I don't want my legs to get compressed or get all wonky, right? Like I've already got them cut to length, so it wouldn't rock. So they're all the same level and I didn't want to, hammer and compress that steel or upset that steel on one leg maybe too much and then end up having a slanted piece. So, so that's why for the cold peening versus hot peening. All right, this piece is hot. Okay. Good to go. Got my slitting chisel out. Camera number two. So this is where split leg aprons work very well, or chap like aprons. I'm gonna work that line. It's a dotted line. I went ahead and scribed a line on here, and then I took and I followed down that line all the way with center punch marks. So I knew where my line was later on so I have it all marked out. So I start it with my little slit and chisel and then I made a much larger broad chisel to finish these things off with. Take out all the little cuts. We're not gonna finish the cutting on this anvil. We will go to another anvil where I'm not gonna cut up Olga service. A good broad chisel like this isn't entirely necessary, but it helps you line things up and get a really nice square look on a long cut like that. So if you make yourself a big broad chisel, just handheld, that can really help out. So I'll go ahead and heat this up one more time and I'll finish that cut. Um, 
there's been some debate on how hard it would be to get you to wear a kilt. So in support of that, <laughs> Couch Forge Company sent a hundred dollar super chat for Roy's kilt fund. <laughs> <laughs> How am I going to wear a kilt with split leg apron? I mean, I could always just take my pants off and just wear the, just wear the apron. <laughs> Might turn interesting if I have to turn around and get something, but... <laughs> hey, it's summer, right? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the $100 super chat. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. According to some of the people who have bought kilts, uh, they can run up to three hundred dollars, so they're they're up there. But um, I don't know. I guess there's one called a utility kilt, which yeah. that probably has a lot of pockets and stuff for putting tools and things like that in. Sorry. Huh? I'm just getting a little extra scrap plate that I can cut on. Got stuff off on. This is almost there. We'll get it going. Thank you. Thank you for the hundred dollars super chat. <laughs> That's awesome. That that tickles me pink. That'd be funny. Wouldn't that be something to be doing a demonstration, a show or something? You know, because when these are down, you can barely. I mean, my boots kind of come up. So if I wore some socks and stuff, you wouldn't know if I'm just wearing leggings or what until I turned around. You'd be like, oh my god, that's a lot more of Roy than I ever care to see. Oh. <laughs> Rick Nicholas says, turn the other cheek, brother. <laughs> <laughs> that is bad. That is bad. Instant demonetization. <laughs> All right. Oh. Anywho, no. <laughs> it's it's going to take more than $100. <laughs> well, I said, I'd said I'd never dance either on camera. And, I gave him the blacksmith jig, you know, the shoulder wiggle and the Quasimodo shuffle. I did the whole thing, so who knows? May all feel different. <laughs> That's something else. So let's go to the anvil, Jess. All right, got a scrap piece of plate on here. As you can tell from the camera, I like to work hot. You can maximize the amount of work you're getting done by getting working on a piece hot. Get that there. Do, 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 do. As a little side note, I kind of want to put this out here. This chisel and all my chisels have a up here on the shank of the chisel is rounded. Everything's rounded on the ends. So this way at the end of my cut, I've got a nice round thing here to prevent splitting or cracking. It eliminates the stress cracking that might happen on this end here. So uh, highly recommend that you radius off the edges of your chisel front and back. And that will really help on your slitting chisels when you're splitting something like this to prevent stress cracking right at the joint here when you go to forge it out. Some people will punch, you know, punch with a round, quarter inch round hole or something and then cut to that so that way they don't get any stress cracking in that area. Just a little pro tip for you if you start with that to begin with, don't have to worry about it. Questions, Jess? No. It's that bad in the, it's nothing but debauchery there, huh? In the con They say claim it's educational. This is an educational conversation. Sure. Um. <laughs> Just make sure that you keep it PG, people. All right? We do have some younger viewers that watch the channel. So as long as you're staying within those guidelines, it's cool. I can take a joke. <laughs> oh, but yeah. Hopefully everybody gave him a hand clap for that, for that super chat. That's awesome. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And it changed again. So thank you. Thank you. 
That one was a 500 peso super chat from Toby Joe 57. Thank you, Toby O 57. I certainly appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. All right. So this is getting up to heat. So while this gets up to heat, unless there's any questions, Jess, anything else? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and talk about if some of our, hopefully we've got some familiar faces in the stream, do we? we got plenty of familiar faces, okay. Long term, long time subscribers, yeah? Good. All right. So, I've been uh, pontificating, <laughs> been pontificating this year a little bit, procrastinating, pontificating, things of that nature, on the direction that I want to go with the channel. And so I just kind of want to put this out there because I feel like I owe it to my longtime subscribers to kind of talk about this a little bit in a live stream. The direct, the current direction of the channel that, that I will be going on, I do intend on putting out forging content, but as of right now, I don't know if it's going to be tutorial based content. And the reason for that being is I'm trying to up the quality level of the videos, if you will, and make it more accessible to everybody um, and for the people who don't want to necessarily hear my voice running on forever. Um, I, in, let me back that truck up. So the reason for that being is that the type of work that I want to start sharing and illustrating and making on a regular basis, the type of projects I want to go into are not very well suited to YouTube in tutorials. Um, if YouTube doesn't see a fast click-through rate, they don't send any information out to you. So you won't get the post. You won't even get the post. They won't, they won't send it out to my own subscribers. YouTube is definitely a really weird place right now when it comes to that. And uh, we're almost too hot there. I might pull that out here in just a second. YouTube is becoming an increasingly weird place where you know they're really for the sensationalized, salacious kind of content. You got to get it out there. Or they're not even going to send out the content or notifications to your own subscription. Your own subscribership, right? The people who subscribe to you to watch the videos in the first place, they won't even send it to you if there's not enough clicks within a period of time, um, which I think is ridiculous for education channels like mine, but that's just kind of how it works. So if the video doesn't get any traction, you guys don't get to see it. There's, but it takes six hours to make it. It's, it's kind of one of those one of those processes of time. So I do plan on doing the occasional, I do plan on doing the occasional tutorial from time to time, but the type of content that I want to roll off into is where I share a little bit about a process and the reason why something goes on and then maybe have a longer video uh, at some point of the thing. Like for right now, you guys got me for two hours, but for the next six hours upcoming in a month, in a stream with work on the back end that I'm going to be doing to prep things, we'll be working on this. Um, that's just not the type of content that YouTube is promoting or even putting out there for anybody to see. So um, it's sad. It's sad. A lot of big, a lot of the big educational YouTubers, they're all suffering um, from this. Anybody who's doing tutorials or how tos are, are kind of getting hit right now with just, yeah. YouTube being YouTube. But anyways, um, so I want to do this type of work. This is what I want to share. This is the type of stuff I want to share. So it'll be less about like doing an entire project in eight minutes or less. It will be individual parts of a process leading up to maybe a longer video. And that's kind of how that content structure is going to change going forward. Uh, I can, there's, uh, you know, there's a thousand bottle opener videos out there. There's a thousand how to make a nail videos. There's a, there's a thousand how to make a hook, how to make a thing, how to make a little trinkety doodad and doodad. What I want to get into is sharing about like what I would do for my custom commission work. 
I want to share that type of stuff. I want to do the bigger projects, the bigger jobs. I've got a gate that I'll be making this year. Um, it's a 16 foot driveway gate. I'll be starting on that here in the spring of the year. And I want to share about that process as I go along. Um, I just cannot, it's gonna take me three months to make this driveway gate. There's not a, possi there's not a possibility that I can turn that into an eight minute video and just fit even an ounce of the information into it. So that means A, I don't film it for three months, I don't film stuff, or B, I film stuff around certain processes I'm working on and hopefully that will be helpful and informative to you out there. So hopefully everybody is still cool with that. You won't hit the unsubscribe button and say, ah, enough of old Roy there. <laughs> he doesn't do the type of forging content I'm into. Um, yeah. But there's a ton of beginner level projects and things on the channel. Um, lots of tutorials out there, but they're basically dead videos. No one's watching them. So there's hundreds of hours of content that we've put out of tutorials that no one's, that, that no one's watching. They're getting maybe 10 views a month. So um, there's a big library there to, there's a big library to watch if you are a beginner. Um, and you're looking for that type of content, there's a big library to watch. And maybe even some of our longtime subscribers can even comment in some of those videos, some other related videos that might be interesting for other people to watch. So, but I just wanted to take and put that out there. I know some people have had some questions. Where's all the, where's the forging videos? You know, still waiting on forging videos, things of that nature. Um, the forging videos that I plan on putting out, they take longer to film. Uh, so there will be more anvil review videos, there will be more tooling review videos, things of that nature to help beginners because those videos are very easily put out and YouTube, are, YouTube is favoring them. They're, they're mass marketing them to everybody. So, you know, they just work for right now, but those are going to be kind of like the general content and then as I get projects or processes completed, and I can get all the editing work done, I will be uploading forging videos, uh, but it'll be a different kind of format of tutorial. Not, hey, here's the start to finish in eight minutes, an entire gate. You just can't do it. There's just, there's no way of doing a gate in eight minutes. And you learn anything. There's, <laughs> there's just no way you'll learn anything in eight minutes. So uh, I can take a certain process and go along things and I can share about putting scrolls or branching scrolls like this. This is gonna have a lot of forge welding to it um, and branching scrolls. The gate will, t will also have a lot of forge welding and branching scrolls and collars and you name it. Foofy stuff, acanthus leaves, things of that nature. And I can share each one of those processes individually, but to do an entire project <laughs> like a gate in eight minutes, just can't do it. So. Hopefully everybody understands that. Hopefully that's okay. Support or no? Um, yes, I mean, there's people on both sides. You know, obviously we encourage you to watch what you're truly interested in. Um, you know, Neil Graham, he says, I will watch whatever you put out, Roy. I'm sure we all will. You know, Caitlin at Ouroboros, she says, you know, she's interested in forging content, you know, not necessarily the anvils and stuff. And she's already watched a lot of beginner content. So it just kind of varies for person to person what your experience is gonna be. Um, those of you who are, who's you know you mentioned you're behind us no matter what we appreciate that uh graham he's in a five dollar super chat and he said uh do what you need to do roy and we are going to support you thank you thank you yeah and and ultimately at the end of the day that's that's what it's going to be there are some people who are not interested in watching anything about our channel other than the forging content in fact i've had several people uh comment in the last couple weeks uh you know that they're just here for the anvil giveaway like, that's it. Like, they, they have no interest whatsoever in the channel. Otherwise, um, some people, they don't like the gear or the to to blacksmith tooling reviews or anything like that. Um, that's fair enough. Uh, you know, that's not, that's not what everyone's there for. So watch what you guys want to watch of ours. It's okay if it doesn't suit you, if it doesn't fit. That's okay too. We do appreciate everyone who does watch the content on a regular basis. But uh, yeah, I just gotta be honest with you. That's where I'm at. I can't do anything about it and progress as a Smith. I can't do anything about it and showcase uh, the best of my abilities when I'm 
forced into a pigeonhole of, okay, I've got to find a project to do this week, even though I've got a thousand hours on my plate over here, I have to find a simple enough project that I can do in 12 minutes or roughly a half hour. I've done, I have more videos on my channel around that type of stuff than anybody else on the platform. And so I, I, I just, I've been there, kind of done that. And so <laughs> I have more playlists than what some people have videos on their own channel. And that's, that may sound like a brag, but that's, that's just kind of letting you know the scope of what the channel is. There's just, uh, again, I've got to do what I need to do as a Smith to continue to grow, mature, do things in the shop that will inspire people and bring people along with the process. Again, I might find some helpful little trick or something for a beginner or a little small project and decide to slack off for the day and do that. Um, but, you know, that'll be here and there. That won't be the, the daily occurrence. Definitely will not be <laughs> seven videos a week or 14 videos a week like we did at one time. Um, again, I hope that you all are seeing that the quality is going up, but as quality goes up, quantity comes down. It's just, it's a bar, it's a ratio. So thank you everyone who's been doing super chats. By the way, I haven't been not noticing the lights change. Uh, just thank you very much. Thank you for listening to me waffle on for a few minutes there. All right, we ready? Let's go over the anvil. Just about everybody zoned out, huh? <laughs> All right. So, first things first, we need to do a courtesy bend. So we need to bend one leg away. We need to bend the other leg away. So you get something that looks like that. And then we're gonna start drawing down these legs. This is quarter inch thick material. Since we split it in half, we're, we're with quarter by one now or six mil by 25 mil stock. Try not to get too much, too many missed hammer blows there. Now it's getting a little too cool. Take a break from it. Hopefully you guys can see that okay? Look good? Or is it too dark? Oh, it's good. Looks good? Okay. Mr. Coffee, good evening. Thank you for the orange super chat. He said, good evening, everyone. Hope you and the family are doing well. Uh, yes, we are. We're all healthy and well right now, um, which is good. Uh, we like it when we're not down with colds and stuff, which it seems like we get those when we travel. So, but yeah, we've been uh, doing good. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Noble Keys, thank you for the blue super chat. He says, CCI, love what you guys do. Uh, do you need special insurance to give lessons at home? Thanks. Jessica, your department. <laughs> I was gonna see if Roy wanted to take that one. Um, it, there's like a general insurance, general liability insurance you can get. Uh, it's a good idea to have it. Um, you know, just, it's a generally a good practice, especially if you're gonna have that going on a lot, where you're gonna have people out to your home. Uh, just to have yourself covered in that way. Um, also, we had Just Gonna Get Better, uh, $2 Super Chat, who says, on behalf of a cool dude, JT put his name in lights. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for the Super Chats. Hello, Mr. Coffee. Um, I'll expound a little bit more on the insurance bit. Um, so it is good to cover yourself with some general liability insurance, like Jessica was saying. Um, it's not super important. Different states, though, may require different things for a business and for classes, so you need to check your local situation, um, whatever that may be, um, and read up on that. Maybe consult an attorney um, in that department, insurance agent, 
attorney sometimes will tell you better than what an insurance agent will too as well, um, some different pitfalls. Having a liability waiver can be helpful as well if you're gonna have people out to your place. Um, but it, as what was explained to us by our family attorney is that not all, not all liability waivers will stick though. So um, that really only, it, it doesn't cover gross negligence. So if on your part, if you're, you know, they're holding a punch for you and you come down and break their wrist with a sledgehammer, that's on you, bucko. You're going to owe them a new wrist, right? Like, so that's just, it's not going to cover you. <laughs> just a regular liability waiver at that. Um, in general, it's more or less, it's something there like, hey, you can't come back on me if you trip and fall or, you know, if you get, you know, pull out of my driveway and get hit by a truck, that, that's not my, you know, that's not on me that, you know, I had a bush that you couldn't see around and you pulled out and you got hit by a truck. So, you know, it kind of, it kind of stops a lot of that. So having one of those in place is usually generally a good idea and having a, um, doing whatever is special to your locale as far as stuff. But if you want to get some general insurance, G general liability insurance, that's a good first step um, to go that route. Great question. Um, yeah. uh, also, Yama's green super chat, and that was someone that's up there. He says, Roy, join me on the entertainment side, LOL. Um, also, there is one uh, matter of, of uh, keeping that we need to have here, and that is um, what acceptable uh, behaviors on the channel is. So like what, there was a question or kind of a comment by one person that was, uh, they had seen some of their friends get blocked. And so maybe it'd just be a good point to go over what we consider is not acceptable behavior on our channel. Yeah. Um, if you have somebody in general that got blocked. So if you have somebody that got blocked and you thought it was unjustly, you can always email us at our Gmail or at our contact page and say, hey, I had a friend or my friend is so-and-so, they got blocked. Um, we can always go back and look at whatever their message, whatever their um, thing was that kind of led to them getting blocked. Um, in general, be respectful. So a lot of people will come in. It's okay for you to voice your opinion about whether you don't like something that I did in the video. It's okay to say can have um, civil discord. If you disagree about a certain process, there's a way of writing that out. But if you're going to cuss at me, if you're going to call me everything but a white person, if you're going to make a bunch of obscene language, or if you're assaulting somebody else in the comment section, you will be blocked instantaneously. So uh, one thing about text, text does not read very good when you've got a lot of snark or you have a lot of uh, well, what do they call it? Um, sarcasm. Sarcasm is very hard to understand and to translate into you just not being a jerk that I really don't have to care about. I can block you in a half a second. You don't have to watch me. The videos are free. I take a ton of my time to instruct you. And if you can't be respectful, you're out. Pretty simple. It's a pretty simple thing. You know, if it's not polite at someone's dinner table, if it's not polite conversation to somebody you've never met before, to talk to them the way that you're about to in someone's comment section, generally you're gonna get blocked um, when it comes to that. Uh, I was recently accused of muting people's comments and that disagree with me and things like that. That I do not do. I mute people who are insulting to intelligence, to what I do, my faith, other people in the comment section, if you're being just an insulting jerk, you will get blocked. Simple as that. So I don't know about your friends in particular, but those are the rules. So you, you'll find me on edge and ranting. I used to rant a whole lot. Um, I've been taking a big step back from the comment section in general. Um, and we're actually thinking about, that's a good segue into this. We are thinking about adding channel moderators that will moderate the channel for us because human beings are not meant to take that much negative criticism. When you go to your job, your school, your work, your thing like that, you might have one other employee, student, fellow person, human being 
that dislikes you and lets you know that, but you don't get 200 of them a month like what I get. 200 plus, sometimes it's 400, sometimes it's 200. Everything from super vile people, if you start with a bunch of cussing, you're out instantly. I don't even read your comment f further from that. Um, but then you have people who, because they disagree with something, they think that that's a good place to belittle you as a human being. Those type people, they add up under your skin eventually, and then you block them. So I do have a couple like long time channel trolls. I leave them just because they're, they usually skirt the line. <laughs> they skirt the line just enough. They're just, they're just right there on the edge of being blocked, but they never cuss and they never go over the top and they never fully assault people in the comment section. And if you're not doing that, then you'll become part of my long time channel trolls. And I laugh at you while I look at your comment and then I scroll on. <laughs> it, it, it's fine like that, but uh, yeah. So that's kind of that's kind of how that that works. So if you're ch so if you had some friends of yours get blocked, they might have left inappropriate comments, and they can certainly get with me about it. I'm a big person. I have forgiveness. So if they want to abide by those, you, you know, the uh, rules and just be gentlemen like or gentle ladies or whatever, that's fine. We can do that, but. This is a free platform. I spend thousands of dollars to take and bring you free content to enjoy and to the people who enjoy it, not to be belittled or berated in any way. It just doesn't fly. There you go. Hopefully I answered your question. Yeah, thank you to all the super chats that had happened in, in that amount of time. I saw the channel. I s keep seeing this thing turn different colors and I want to say, woohoo, thank you, but then something goes on. So. Uh, yes, that one was from Rick Kirby, who says, I like the new idea for the channel, but please don't remove the beginner videos. The beginner videos will always stay up, the previous ones. Um, and I may add some new ones as I, as I find something interesting that I want to do with that. Um, but again, a lot of my old time subscribers, a lot of you guys, that guys and gals have been around for a long time. You came from the time when I was doing two videos a day and I was doing just like everything under the sun, every single project under the sun. Some of the videos you watched, some of the videos you didn't. Some, of the, some people have seen all my videos, even if it was for two minutes and didn't watch it all the way through. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of that that's been on the channel. Um, Again, a lot of you have come from the old way of me doing it where I was just video after video after video after video just really slamming them out. All I'm saying is, is that there is going to be longer distances between um, those type videos and there will be other type of content just about my regular day-to-day day -to -day life, business, interests, when it comes to forging those type bigger projects, things like that. That's that's where the channel's going, uh, but I won't be removing any sort of beginner videos. And I'm burning something up, so let's go to the anvil. <laughs> let's, let's do this now while it's still super hot. We'll just make that the short leg of the scrolls. <laughs> Questions? There is one from Denise Barrett that came in with her super chat. She says, if we get Roy into a kilt, well, we need sunglasses to deal with white legs. <laughs> yes, I, I think you probably would. <laughs> Bring on the Ray-Bans. <laughs> Hashtag not a sponsor. <laughs> Good. Was there any more replies to the blocked comment section? Some unhappy people talking? Okay, well, I'm not here to make everyone happy. Can't make you all happy. What's up? Yeah, again, um, <laughs> yeah, normally 
Uh, normally everyone's, you know, um, has friendly conversation. So yeah, yeah, it did kind of get a little, um, a little bit of drama this evening, but we are getting to the point where we're gonna go ahead and keep it forging related. And uh, if you have any forging related questions, go ahead and drop those in and I will read those off to Roy. And, oh, go ahead, you have something to say? So, so I'll put this out here right now and for anybody who's moderating the comment section. I am not here. I am not here whatsoever to upset anyone. I am the nicest guy that you'll meet in person. I literally give my heart out to you and I will continue to do so on this channel. If you want to be a jerk, if you think I'm censoring you, I am. It doesn't matter. It's my channel. It's my channel. I'm going to choose what I want to see and what I don't want to see. If you want to have civil discord, I love it. It's great. It's fine. It's good to contradict me. I had one person contradict me about my assertions about um, the ball bearing drop, right? That the rebound does not showcase hardness. Someone said, yes, it does. And they showed me a link that I could look at. It was a Lieb rebound tester. And that's exactly what it does. It literally, they use a hardened piece of tungsten that bounces between some magnetic poles. And depending on how fast and how many times, it gives out a reading of what the hardness or the surface level of the material. Lots of big words and scientific things. So I made another video where I put up the comment and I thank them for making that correction for me and then I corrected the thing. So if you have a difference of opinion, that's fine. If you wanna get vile, I'll block you. Moderators, block them, I don't care. That, I'm not, not here for that. I'm here to take and teach, instruct, to not waste your time and I'm not here to babysit you. I'm not here to make sure you're emotionally put together and stable in a comment section. Not my job, not my job. It's not that job, it's a dirty comment section. I won't have it on my channel, not for a second. Not in the live stream, not on my regular videos. So don't like it, tough kanazas. It's the way it is. Um, I give away tooling, I give away an anvil once a month. I don't know what else you want for a nice guy, but that's about as nice as I get. So, and if you had to endure what some of you say in a comment section, and you said it to my face in person, you'd have a totally different Roy. A totally different Roy. So um, best not do that. That's just end of story. People think they know me. They think that they know because I'm a Christian guy that I'm a nice guy, and I am. I am. But I also have a past that'll come floating back in a quick, fast hurry. So there. Drama over? Moderators, no more drama tonight. Good. Also, Tim, Big Dog Forge, thank you for the orange super chat. And he says, love you guys, God bless. Uh, good seeing you, Tim. Glad, glad you're able to drop in for a bit. Thank you for being here, Tim. We appreciate you. Sorry, everybody's getting in on that rant mode, right? Hitting, yeah. that, hitting that nerve. Oh. All right, uh, the first question comes from Jacob Weiser. Is there a downside to forging constantly at, or? Is there a downside to constantly for working at a forge welding heat? Good question. Made me check my piece of steel. <laughs> um, yes, the one downside is you get grain growth. So the hotter it stays, the longer it stays, you get larger grain structure in the steel. Um, so, but as long as you're pounding it and you're beating on it, you're getting into shape and then you let it normalize afterwards, it's usually not a problem. In a lot of artwork type stuff, things that we're doing here, you won't notice it unless you're asking the steel to do a lot of crazy stuff and you're gonna do some cold chasing on it later or something like that, then you probably need to normalize the piece again uh, to a bit. But yes, that is one downside. The other downside is you lose a lot of material to scale. Um, you'll see because I've been running my mouth, this thing has had a lot of time in the air blast and at heat, so it's gonna scale up more than if I just brought it up to a hot heat, brought it out, worked it, and got the work done. So the longer it stays at a high heat, the larger the grain growth, the more oxidization that you get on the piece, um, and those are kind of the downsides. As far as a mechanical 
as far as mechanically speaking, usually tool steels, those are where you'll have a problem if you keep it at prolonged uh, welding heats because you can end up getting carbon migration, and you can get a lot of, um, you can lose carbon out of the piece and other things. If it has a lot of different alloys in it, you can boil some of those out so, um, and then not end up with a piece that's workable. So again, I'm not a metallurgist, but in general, you know, get the work done, not in like in the demonstration mode and, and, and go about it that way. So. Let's go. I'm ready to go. Can we go to the anvil? Okay, let's go there. So I'm working the legs of this piece one at a time. I'm doing that for two reasons. I'm alternating the legs that I'm working out. One, so I can keep them both in balance for the length, and two, working out both legs uh, one heat at a time. Not only does it keep it balanced, uh, but it prevents one of the legs from getting in your way. So if they're both equally balanced, the legs won't be getting in your way as much. If you got one that's super long, it gets really awkward flopping around. If you've got one that's super long and one super short, it becomes a pain. So work them every heat a different leg. Put that down. Does that make sense? All right, so now that my blood pressure is raised, let's uh, go ahead and give away a few things since, you know, just so this way I'm not a complete sob. Huh? Should I pose a few questions first? Because then I'll scroll away. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> if, I don't, if I don't tell Roy now, everybody's comments will scroll away because YouTube only keeps the memory so far of the comments. Um, Let's see, uh, Troy Roush asked, um, he said he was having a cold spot in the center of his coke fire. Uh, if you had any ideas what might be the cause of that. If you're getting a cold spot in the center of your coke fire, um, it might be that it's burning hollow in that area and so you're getting more air blasts through that or oxygen and that oxygen's cooling off. That jet stream is cooling off that section of your fire. One of the other things that could be happening is you could have, depending on your forging design, your forge design, you could be having a big clinker or something blocking it in that, that particular area. Sometimes this thing will fill, this thing, this thing will fill up with clinker, block the air grate, and then my hot spots are to the left and to the right of the fire, and in the center it's not as hot. That's because I got a big clinker in there and I got to peel that thing out or shift it out of the way in the fire pot in order for me to get that good hot spot right in the center again. Um, most likely, that's what it is. It's either that it's burnt too hollow in that area. I don't know your forge design. It is either burnt too hollow in that area and it's letting too much air blast through, which will cool off the coals. It'll do the opposite and it'll scale your piece excessively. Or there is a clinker sitting there and it's preventing it from getting, getting heat. Uh, the next one was from uh, Noah Bailey with a blue super chat. He says, what's a good item to start with for a beginner? Good item to start with beginners. Um, generally, I would recommend hooks. You know, make hooks, bottle openers, nails. Um, lot, practice a lot with your tapering, tapering, drawing out material, stuff like that. Projects that you can look at, look at old historical ironwork and see what you can do with, look at different examples of people's stuff online and kind of start there. Um, that's where I would go. Um, and then maybe move up. It's kind of a fun thing to move up once you get some hand tools in your hands from doing your bottle openers and your hooks and your, and your things like that to doing like fire pokers and then maybe even animal heads afterwards and experiment and play around with some animal heads 
they look challenging at first, and the proportions are probably the hardest part on an animal head, but once you get the proportions down pat, they're a lot of fun. They're a lot of fun, and they make you feel like, woohoo, I'm really going somewhere with this blacksmithing thing, so uh, definitely of value. And thank you, everyone, who has been doing the super chats. Thank you, Jessica, for keeping up with those, and hopefully you're getting with the regular chats as well. Like, huh? Yeah, a bunch of questions. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go ahead and give away another punch and chisel so everyone knows I'm not such a mean, nasty ogre, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it it kind of bugs me because I can't see the chat, but it's probably a good thing I can't see the chat, huh? Yeah. Donuts and Mr. Coffee got it. Good. Good. Glad, glad that's taken care of. Um, Whew, put the blood pressure back down there, Roy. Let's, uh, let's uh, go back to our happy place that we like to do, which is give things away. Makes my heart feel good. <laughs> All right, so you guys know what to do. Comment in the comment section if you want to win this little chisel. We'll go ahead and rock this boat real quick. All right, this first one's going to go to Ken Boltman, who says me. Woohoo, Ken Boltman, congratulations. Get with us, contact us. Thank you so much for being here, being part of the channel. Thank you for engaging. <laughs> Next one's gonna be the square punch. All right, and we are going to rock it. Let's do it, drum roll. All right, the square punch is going to Neil Graham, who says me. Hey, congratulations, Neil Graham. Thank you for being here. You won the square punch. Again, get with us through the contact link in the description. And as I said, everyone who won some of uh, these things last week, I will be getting them out this week. Uh, I'll make sure that they get out to you. I do apologize for the delay. We've been crazy busy. A lot of life has been happening on the back end, so. Anywho, what else? Yes, there was a yellow super chat that was from Anthony Taylor, who says to help lower Roy's blood pressure, LOL, love the work. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I can't, I, can't, uh, I can't win them all. Unfortunately, some people think that this is their platform to say whatever they want, how they want, and... Uh, yeah, I just didn't grow up that way that you could say anything you wanted to me. I just, no, that's not, that's not how, I, how I grew up. That's not how I do things. So, you know, we got coyotes running in the background. That's what those are. Yeah, I try to stay out of conflict as much as I can these days. I got a wife and kids, so they've settled me down, haven't you? Yes, we have. I have a very calming effect on you. <laughs> calming effect. And of course, money helps. Money helps. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. In all seriousness, um, I do appreciate the regular people that understand and appreciate what we're trying to do um, with the channel. I, pr I appreciate you all more than you know. It's for situations like that that show up every single day on the channel. Trust me, it's every single day on the channel. So thank you. <laughs> we also had another super chat from uh, the Fencers Forge right before the giveaway. I was going to read it off and then I was like, but I came back to it. So <laughs> uh, thank you for the yellow super chat. He says, oh my goodness, love you both so much. Your work is incredible. Keep up the amazing work. Keep up the videos. I watch every one. Let's get back to forging. But first the sticker pack, LOL, two thumbs up in a... I think that's a cow. Or no, it's a smiley face with a cowboy hat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the super chat. Appreciate it. Let's get back to work, like you said. We've got a long leg here. Let's draw this out. This is the shorter one. We're getting there now. Yeah, this is probably not going to happen all in one night, but, but we're going to get it out pretty far. in one evening. We might get the finial done tonight. And we'll see where we're at on time.
and we'll gauge the rest. All right, there we go, nice and long. It's kind of cold working it there. Do the next leg, keep going. At some point, one of these legs are gonna get driven out. We'll go camera one, okay? At some point, one of these legs are gonna get drawn out a little bit longer. I'm gonna make it just a wee bit longer than the other one. So this way I can get the effect I'm after. Um, at the top, I'm kind of going for a bit of a flame motif detail at the top. So one end's gonna scroll back around and the other one's gonna loosen over the top of that. So, and we got another super chat, so thank you. Thank you very much. We also had a question from Ivy's Forge about the project. It says, I will ask it again, Jess, so you don't have to scroll back. LOL, Roy, will you be using a scroll jig for the scrolls or doing them by hand over the horn? I will be doing them by hand over the horn. And the reason why I'm doing that, I do have scroll jigs that I can use, um, but that doesn't help somebody who doesn't have scroll jigs. So that's why I'll be doing them by hand over the anvil top and over the horn. So that way you can see that you can do that. Um, also, it is not overly critical. It's not overly critical that these, uh, I'm not making 12 of these. So. In this case, it's okay to be more freehand when you do it um, and just doing it by eye to get things to match. If you were doing something where you needed to make up three or four of these in the case of doing the table legs like we were talking about or shelf brackets, you most certainly would want to create a scroll form and then do it around forms. So you would make one a scroll jig and work your material around a scroll jig. That way you can make sure that you get everything accurate. But yeah. Long story short, I'll be doing it by hand just to showcase um, doing it by hand on, on that end of it. So, good? Yeah. Um, the blue, or no, it's green. The green super chat came from Ryan Williams who says, keep doing what you do, Roy. Love all your content and appreciate the effort that goes into these videos. Good, I'm glad, I'm glad you appreciate it. So thank you, thank you for the green super chat, whichever one that one is. I don't know the monetary amount, um, but, but thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your hard earned money. Um, also, I'll just, you know, I'll put, this, I'll put this out there too. You know, I appreciate people's time a lot. You know, we've got a short life to live here on this planet. You're lucky if you get 100 years on this planet, and most of us do not. Most of us do not. In fact, a lot of us get cut short. And so, you know, like, I'm not here to waste anybody's time. You know, if, if you don't find value in what we do, or if it's just really not your content or your thing right now, check back in a few months. Maybe I'm doing something, maybe I've posted a video that is up your wheelhouse, you know. Uh, that's okay to take breaks from time to time from channels, and and uh, I've done it to other channels, you know, that I'm not. Tech, I mean, tech channels. I watch some tech YouTubers and things like that. And on occasion, I'll watch their videos, and then I'll binge watch for a month or two their videos, and then I kind of get my fill, and I go on for two, three months, and then finally see them pop up in my feed again, and I'm like, hey, I'll check them out again, see what they're up to now. Um, so again, that's, that's perfectly okay um, to do that. And if I've said something or I've done something wrong, I am definitely, I'm definitely not beyond constructive uh, criticism or, you know, things like that to where, you know, say, hey, you flubbed this one up, maybe you want to readdress that or look at that. I'm definitely not necessarily against that. Um, I don't want to work in a constant vacuum, but at the same point, it's not good, me personally, to stay in that environment, environment constantly. I'm a very excitable, emotionally excitable individual. I do my best to keep that under wraps, but that's just kind of who I am. So I got to watch those really big meaners. 
so I don't become a big meaner. Well, on. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone who, who does watch and find value. If you find value, uh, I'm very thankful. That's what the whole thing's for. So thank you. Thank you for being here. There was an orange super chat from Ben Toombs who said, thanks for not banning me yet for the quad squad. See you in Ohio. <laughs> I could never, I could never ban Ben. Ben, you're awesome, brother. Uh, I know it's the running joke, everybody ban Ben Toombs, but he's a he's a great guy, super nice guy. It's uh, it's it's fun, it's fun to know him. <laughs> well, that's where all the kill jokes started. They were saying it'd be like a, a dress on on Ben earlier, and uh, that he needed a cape and things like that. <laughs> 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 ben takes a lot of abuse, but it's like, it's all in good humor though. So he knows it's in good humor. Everyone around them that makes jokes with Ben, know Ben already and make it in good humor. So. <laughs> Waiting on you, brother. Waiting on you. <laughs> oh, this is good and hot. Let's go ahead and do a heat. And then I want to give away some sticker packs. No. All right, continue to draw out the leg. At this point, I'm gonna start deciding which one I want to be the longest leg. I'm just judging that based upon appearance. And I kinda like this one, I like this other one to be the longer leg, so I'm not gonna go too super long with this one. I'm probably gonna finish it off right in here. Just a simple choice. If you're working to an actual design that you've drawn for a project that you have to make it exact, then you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to which one of those legs needs to be longer. So what that means is if, say the scroll, grab out thing here, Mr. Thing. Um, if the right side, well I'm in shot. Can they see that okay? Yeah. All right. If the I don't have as much light in here. That's my problem. No, those lights are good. It's just I didn't bring in the extra. That's the problem. I was wondering why it looks so dark. Um, if your left leg was meant to curl in and be tightly wound and the right leg was supposed to be the flame bit, well, you need to make sure that the right leg gets drawn out longer, right? Or vice versa. Whichever pattern or drawing you guys get it has to be what it has to be, right? Like, so you need to make sure it's according to the drawing when you do it. Um, and always just be checking that before you get too far along. Sometimes that's a habit of us, uh, of ours, is just to get a little too far along. You know, you get over antsy. You're like, oh, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna get this done. And then you're like, oh, 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 oh. Wait a minute, I just messed that up. <laughs> so don't be that guy. Don't be Roy. <laughs> because I've done that before several times. Yeah, so that's gonna be the short leg. So I'm gonna continue to draw out the other leg now and get it to length, final length. Let's see here. Uh, the Aimless Adventure sent a blue super chat. Actually, green, sorry. I it looks blue on my screen. Uh, when drawing out small things like fingers on your pointer, um, they crack and break on me. What am I doing wrong? The small fingers, like the small fingers on the pointer, um, when you get down to that size, everything has to scale down. The power you're putting into it, the hammer size, all that has to take in. Uh, you know, go down. Most likely it's already really good and hot at that point or it's been hot. And again, think of that grain structure just kind of getting enlarged. So it might help if you let it kind of normalize every now and then, you know, heat it up, do something to the hand, moving your fingers out of the way, getting them all ready to go to be forged on and then heat it up and then let it cool off naturally just to help normalize, you know, help bring more regularity to that grain structure. So this way, your next heat that you come in with, you can then continue on with your fingers. Um, most likely, and this has happened to me a couple times, it's, from, it's stress cracking. That's all it is, it's stress cracking. It's like bending a coat hanger back and forth. Um, so you have to give it time. You have to give it time to percolate. I know like when you're working on a project, you wanna get the project done, right? And so you're right in the middle of it and it's not on your thought process that, hey, I should let this thing kind of, nor I'm asking it to do a lot. I'm asking this material to have a big transformation. 
Um, and it's not the first thing on your thought process to say, hey, I need to set this aside for a little bit so it can kind of relax and then go back to forging on it. It's not natural to do that, um, but try that and let me know how it works for you. And maybe, yeah, you know, the small stuff will stop cracking off on you. Go on, any questions? Or uh, yes, we're just, yeah, we're almost ready. Um, yes, yeah, somebody was asking about the clapping. Uh, yeah, not, not everybody does that like Ivy's Forge says, um, but, but everybody here enjoys doing that. So yeah, we get a lot of clappy, clappy hands whenever somebody does a super chat such as uh, the orange, uh, sorry, I'm getting my colors, yellow one from Inconvenient Skills, who said, I appreciate all the knowledge you and Jess have shared for us new guys. You're very welcome. Very welcome and thank you. Yeah, um, the clapping hands, that started long before this building. That started on the way earlier days when we, when we first started streaming. And really what it, what it came about was from an effort to just show appreciation because the people in the comment section who are doing clappy hands, they're saying thank you. It's like a salute for supporting the channel and what we do with your finances. And so it's just recognition, you know, it's just that extra little bit of recognition to say thank you, thank you for supporting the channel. Um, and that's kind of where that got started. You know, I just wanted to clap and say, hey, thank you. Make sure everybody does the same for upping this because these cameras, they didn't come from nowhere. The HDMI cords, the computer, the microphones, the lapel mics, the things like that, the lighting in this shop, um, you can think the vast majority of that, you can think those people that are commenting on the regular uh, in the super chats and things like that, all of our regulars in the stream, you can thank them for that because that's, they've, they've, put, they've put a good hard amount of their dime towards this little show. So yeah, so that's what it is. By all means, give them a hand clap. Trust me, we won't tell your friends, you know, your secret's safe with us. <laughs> oh, all right, uh, I wanna go ahead and give away some stickers real quick, okay? I know I'm rambling on, but I wanna do these before my piece is hot, so we'll move on, so. All right, we're over to Camber 2. Oh, I won't, they're coming. No. All right, so we're gonna be giving away um, a couple sticker bundles, probably two or three sticker bundles. We'll be giving away, right, honey? Yeah. So we're gonna give away the first one. Again, you get like four stickers in these, pretty awesome. As I've said in the past, be careful of sticking these to something that you, know, you don't want them to <laughs> not stay stuck to forever. They do stay stuck forever. Oh. <laughs> or, so if they're crooked when they go on, they're probably gonna stay crooked. <laughs> for the duration of them being there. So yeah, so we're gonna give away some of these bundles um, and we will draw for the first name. So if you want some of these bundles, start commenting. All right, the first one goes to Ben Tooms who says, Dana wears a skirt, it's cute. <laughs> <laughs> are we back to the main screen? We are now. Okay, Dana wears a skirt. Ben Toombs, congratulations, brother. You won some stickers. <laughs> I think you've won some stickers in the past, too. Um, but that's awesome. Again, thank you for being here. You know what to do. Contact us. Appreciate it. Let's give a note away another one, Jess. All right, this next one goes to the Fencers Forge. She says, oh my goodness, pick me. Awesome, Fencers Forge, congratulations. Hope you enjoy the stickers, brother. Hope you enjoy the stickers. Thank you for being here. Congratulations. So, yeah, so um, for those of you who are new in the stream, I don't know how many people we got watching or anything else or how many new faces you're seeing over there. But for those of you that are new here, uh, the way that we do this is totally at random. So she just scrolls and picks some person at random in the comment section. Um, so that's kind of how you win. So there's no favoritism. There's no... It's a roll of the dice. <laughs> it's a roll of the dice. Two live streams ago, everything went to like Europe or otherwise. Everything went overseas. There was like only one item that we shipped out that was in the United States. <laughs> so everything went everywhere. So the shipping cost was quite high um, on that one. And then the previous one to that, everything was in the lower 48. Everything was in the lower 48 states. There wasn't anything that went overseas. So again. It's just, it just depends. It's all at random, so random chance. Well, let's go ahead and give away one more, Jessica. All right, all right ready? Yep. All 
right, this one landed on Ivy's Forge and Homestead, who says me. Woohoo! Ivy's Forge and Homestead. Congratulations, you won that there, brother. And uh, thank you for being here this evening. So the next time, after next time we do that, um, I'll give away a couple more stickers and then I'll give away a copper tongs, one of those miniature tongs there from Grayson's Forge. Appreciate it. What else we got going on? Oh, thank you for all the super chats that had came in, by the way. I don't know if I said that when they were coming in or not, but I got to stay ahead of them. Okay. Got a forge? Yep, we got a forge. You ready? Yep. All right. Go ahead. All right, so this is the leg that I've chose to be longer. So I'm going to pay extra close attention to it, and I want to get it extra long. The way we're going to do this is we're going to cheat the system a little bit by forging a lot of the thickness out of the piece. Hopefully everybody can hear me okay. I'm doing that. That's going to help stretch this, this scroll out extra long. So that leg is going to get a lot longer, but it's going to look, when it lays flat on the wall, really good. You'd be like, how do you get that leg so much longer than the other one? So the one leg will be a little thicker, but the other leg will be a little bit longer. So it'll just be a visual thing. Just keep that going. Good? Yep. We did have a super sticker that was from John Wellbrook, or sorry, Wellbrook. Uh, it was a jumping pair that says, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Ha 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 ha! Any more coffee? Yes, more coffee. Yeah, so um, I know there's quite a few questions earlier. I did not get to all of them. Uh, if you want to drop them in the comments again below, uh, maybe in between the heats here, I can try to bring up a few of those. And so you know we are at 7 o'clock, Roy. Oh, we're already there. Yeah. Wow, time flies when you're having fun. How many people we got in the stream, Jess? Um, we are sitting at 199, uh, or 200. It's jumping right around the 200 mark. Well, thank you all for being here. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being a part of this stream. Thank you for making it a great stream. Mostly smooth selling, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Drayson's Forge says, be careful, Roy, you'll end up as another meme. Another meme. Ha 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 Somebody's screen grabbing it already. <laughs> yeah, got to watch that. So, all right. I will get this next heat in here and then, and then we'll go. So as you guys can see, it does take quite a bit of time uh, to do this appropriately. So between talking and running my mouth and things like that, that takes extra time. Um, if it was just all straight up forging, you know, you're probably looking right around 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes if you're working solid at, um, for doing one end or finial. Um, probably half hour, 45 minutes if, you know, you need a little extra time because of skill level or whatever. Um, it might take a half hour, 45 minutes um, along that level. And it also depends on whether you have any mechanical aid to help you. If you have somebody who's striking for you, maybe you can draw out the tines a little quicker. Um, that'll all inflex that, but. Problem is, crux of my situation is every time I demonstrate in order to get around to comments and questions and things like that, that does take up a good portion, portion of time in a project, which it just does. So, all right, we ready? Let's go over to the anvil real quick. Okay. All right. Nice and long like, continue to draw that out nice like. So in the next heat, next heat, I'm gonna focus some heat on here and I'm gonna drive these things flat together 
And then I'm gonna drive them away from one another. So this way I can give the space I need for the scroll work that I'm doing, if that makes sense. All right, Gordon Farmer, he asked this question earlier also. Uh, he was asking how you would forge a hanging basket. Um, that'll be have to be something that we'll probably get into. Uh, that's kind of a long, long explanation. Um, most hanging baskets are done with flat steel. So, you know, start with your crossbar sections laid out, make those, and then make the in-between pieces um, and then rivet them all in the center and then your hoops around the outside. Um, you can, if you're trying to go all traditional, then you're gonna have to drill them and rivet it on each one of the tines for the basket that come up. If you're not concerned about going all traditional, slightly easier, just put a tack weld on the inside of the hoop in the basket uh, to hold the hoop around. That's really the simple thing. Really a hanging basket is an exercise in making and building components. So it's not necessarily, it's, it's not a big deal to make a hanging basket. It's just making a lot of the same exact item and then putting them together, if that makes sense. So that's how you go about making a hanging basket and then choose what you want for say a wire bale or what you want to hang it from. You could certainly do it off of something like this if you want to go the extra mile and you could come down, even maybe make up your own wire chain, something that's not forge welded, but that's been around in a C type shape, you could certainly do that as well to just add that little extra panache or panaz <laughs> or things of that nature. All right, we good, honey? Let's go over the, let's go over the anvil. All right, we good? Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and whack these things straight. You don't want to do this over the flat of the anvil because you can leave chop marks. So we don't want that. We just want to get these nice and straight. And then I want to start curving these away. At this point, if you wanted to chase a goat's face into the front of that, that could be an interesting look. <laughs> Now I'm supporting the piece while upsetting it slightly so I get a much smoother away look. I'm doing that in free air space because I want to hit here, but I don't want to leave any marks on the inside edge. So that's taking that out and away. As you can see, that's kind of got that nice 45 degree runaway there, if you will. Look good? Yep, good? All right, we'll get that heated some more. So that was the short leg. I'm gonna finish this finial tonight, Jess. This is what I'm gonna do. Give away those last two things here at the end of the stream. And then uh, that's where we'll leave it for this stream. And we'll come back next week and finish it up. Next week, I'll probably, probably during the week, I'll finish the other end. It's literally the same process. So um, when we come back to this project next week, I will have the other finial end done, preferably or hopefully, and we will go on to, you know, texturing, chamfering, chamfering the edges, putting a hole, slit and drifting a hole through it um, for the outright bar. And then we will go ahead and do start the process on the outright bar. So. So that's, that's what you can expect in the next live stream. We'll do that because we will be giving an anvil away in the next live stream as well. So, so be doing that. Let's go. Questions, Jess? Comments? Comment section? Probably complaints? Yeah, I was just commenting. Kid KV said um, they were, they said they really liked the live stream where I was enameling and they asked um, when I might do some more. And we don't have that scheduled right now, but I was just saying that uh, I get very nervous being the center of attention. Uh, but funny thing is, like right now I'm in the little corner box and it's not really an issue right now. 
I, I don't know, something about just being in control. And I know Roy's like leading the show, so I'm just kind of assisting. It's not really a big deal. Um, Green Dad Sports, he asks, what kind of lavalier is Roy using? I am using a Rode, um, a Rode Filmmakers kit, wireless lav mate. Uh, wireless lav mic. So Rode wireless lav mic system, um, and it, they call it the wireless filmmaker kit. If you go to look it up and search it online, uh, it's a pretty good. It's a pretty good thing. Pretty good option. The one complaint I have with it is this thin cord they give you for the lav mic. It's like it's on this back belt, and if I snag this with anything, it jerks that wire around, and then you guys hear like a a craziness or something like that go on. Um, so again, I wish the cord was a little more robust or I was a slight bit more dainty of a man, but I'm not, so. <laughs> but yeah, that's what that is. Let's go back over the anvil real quick, Jess. Good? Okay. All right, so the one that's gonna become our top, we're gonna forge it away at that 45, just like we did the other one just so this way both sides are even looking. Again, that kind of upsets that material there a little bit. And it just looks a little nicer, a little takeaway there. Straighten that out, long leg out. Now it might be helpful to do a little bit of math. Unlike what I've done here, I'm taking a risk with a guesstimate. I just guesstimating that that is long enough to do what I want with the scroll once this is scrolled up. Um, it would be really good to do some math and figure out exactly how much longer that needs to be than this. So draw out what you're doing first and then guesstimate that out. So now we'll work on that short scroll. Heat that up. Somebody was joking, uh, Robert Badgett, he said, you gotta watch out saying the anvil word. You'll, you'll get like 500 people in here. Um, <laughs> so Aaron Griffin, yeah, that's what we're joking about. Uh, our anvil live streams do have the tendency of getting upwards of 300 subscribers, um, 300 people in the chats and the chat goes wild. So it, yeah, it's been a little bit slower for chat, you know, a um, bit more conversing being going on this time. Yeah, it's good. And I like that, I like that. I like the wild chats and then I also like the quiet ones too, where we get to hang out and converse a bit more. So. All right, what else? Uh, Play, Play Chronic Rainfall says it really is that cold. Is it really that cold in the barn or does the forge provide enough heat? And he had also mentioned that he does not like cold climates. <laughs> yes, it's really that cold. <laughs> the forge does not provide that much heat. It's an uninsulated building for sure, for sure. So. <laughs> All right. Do what we can do here. All right, we ready? Yeah. Let's go over. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna scroll this over. We're gonna start out the very tip. We'll get a little extra roll to it, but then I'm gonna sharpen up that scroll right at that tip. You wanna be careful that you don't do too much knocking around on this. I'm going a little faster than what Probably I should. I should probably take a little extra time to do this. Um, I can always straighten it up a little bit later, but I do have a time limit I got to work with here and not go too crazy. But there we go. We start to get that scrolled over, and that's going to tuck under. That's a, I'm going to keep rolling that to where then it tucks in where we're at here, here Mr. Thing. We're going to roll that in a little tighter to where that's more parallel around and that's gonna come around the top, hopefully. With the least amount of flats in it as we can. But I've already got a few little micro flats there that I'll have to 
byproduct of rushing a little too much. I've got a few little tiny flats in it that would be better if they weren't there. Um, with scroll work, any scroll work, the secret to good scroll work is taking progressive heats, progressively longer heats, so controlling your heat, and then controlling how much you scroll at a time. You don't want to do a bunch. It's gradual, taking little tiny bites with the hammer as you go in little tiny curves and getting those to go. Um, that way, if you do have any little flats, they're so microscopic, they just add up and they look like a perfectly smooth curve in the end, uh, end product. So yeah, it really pays to take your time with the scroll work portion. You've already done all the hard work, the heavy lifting to get this thing forged out. Now you're doing the pretty finesse bit that you worked all this time to get to. So it's really worth giving a lot of your time and attention to this portion of the process. What we got, Jess? Oh, Kid KV says there's three live streams going and he's staying here. <laughs> well, it's a busy, busy evening for live streaming then. Uh, let's see, also, um, Play a Chronic Rainfall says that she's a girl silversmith. I, I said he earlier. Um, and so, yeah, we asked, we asked to find out what she does. And so she says, we're hot forging, some chasing, and repose tools. Awesome, cool. I'm good to have you part of stream. Yeah, who's all streaming at the same time we're streaming? That's an interesting question. I'd like to know. Oh. <laughs> we still have about 200 people here, so we're, we're keeping attention. Entertaining enough to, to stick around for, for, for the last few minutes anyhow, as, as we work on this here. Oh. All right, we're ready, Jess. Let's go over to the anvil. Huh? All right. So at first I'm going to tighten that up a bit more, and then I'm going to start knocking that in. And then I kind of like the way that looks. I'm not going to go too much more with that. I'm just using this to help planish out the surface, using the rest of what I got in the heat here to just help clean that up that surface up a little bit, give it a more uniform, even surface finish. This is a good scale brushing heat right here. So hopefully you guys can see that. Okay? Okay. So now we got to do the next leg. couple of questions. Uh, one comes from David Francis. Does the piece get forge welded together? Um, let's see here. Let's see here. Let me try to, I'm going to try to crank up the ISO here real quick because I think it's just a little dark. I didn't do it. Hopefully I don't mess up nothing. There we go. Um, do the pieces do what? Forge welded together? Yeah. Was that a question? Okay. Um, no, the pieces won't be forge welded together. All this will be traditional joinery. Um, the scroll parts will be forge welded. They will also be pinned or riveted at first and then finished off with a forge welded joint. Um, it will be riveted to the frame. The framework itself will be a mortise and tenon joint, so it will actually be a mortise and tenon there very traditional work and so all of this is going to be basically traditional and even to the drilling when you drill something that's still traditional they had drills way back since well since Methuselah was a baby so they had drills back then um, we'll, we'll be doing some drilling some pinning work riveting work punching slot punching things like that slit and drift stuff uh, all that will be a part of this kind of project here we might even go as far as making the chain and the sign bracket itself. If anybody's interested in do forge welded corners and show you how to make a frame with forge welded corners and, and do that. So kind of piggybacking off the class I just got done teaching where I showcased a lot of those traditional uh, forge welding techniques. 
Ben Toombs asks, to what color to your eye does scale heat stop? I know everyone is different. So, so to, to the eye, the scale heat is when it gets down below a dull orange. When it drops below a dull orange, some people call that red or a dark red. Some people see it as red. Um, so it's kind of like that darker red color. That's when stuff doesn't um, scale up. Now, I personally, if you see it as a bright orange or a dark orange, and then it drops down the red, that's at a planishing heat or a, or a brushing heat, if you will. On the camera, the camera makes things look a little hotter than what they are, and then, some, then it, switches the, it switches the script on you, and once it loses a certain amount of color, the camera darkens everything out and it makes it look darker than what it is. So it's just kind of working with technology here. Um, but yeah, generally at a red heat or a dull orange heat, it won't scale anymore and you know, you're in good shape. Anything above that at a bright orange to yellow, you're in a scaling heat. And no matter how much you brush it, you're still producing surface oxides because it's the iron interacting with the oxygen in the atmosphere, turning into iron oxide. Um, so you can't avoid it when it's at heat. So it's absolutely pointless to keep brushing on it when you should be forging it. You're not getting it. You're scraping off the iron oxide and there's more formulating <laughs> right afterwards. So uh, right back in its place. So something to keep in mind. All right, we're ready, honey. Let's go over the anvil. So now we need to hit this piece. We're gonna start by hitting it way out here. Gotta be careful that it doesn't twist on you. Again, you're kind of working with flat stock, so it doesn't like to it doesn't like to bend hard ways. What I'm looking for here, I have to take that out a little bit. What I'm looking for here is an equal radius here and here, an equal amount of bump or stick out. And also paying attention to the negative space in here. So I need to go in just a bit, not by much. Not by much. Out with the other. There we go. That's starting to look pretty good, I think. Can they see that okay? Yep. There so there you guys can see it. So again, we're trying to maintain a certain amount of negative space. Of course, this isn't going to be a perfect radius unless you worked it on the horn. You could have worked this on the horn to make a perfect radius in there. Um, and that might have looked a little bit better. This is going to look kind of heart shaped. But since we're doing a flame, the bottoms of flames aren't usually just perfectly round. So that's okay there um, to do it that way. But we're going to go ahead and heat it up. This is, this is where you get to be the artist. We go back to the main cam. Okay. This is where you get to be the artist. Make it how you want to make it. Make it as pretty as you want. Make it to your taste, your styling, your flair. Um, go, go for it. You know. Heck, you could even go through the trouble of splitting these once again and peeling off other little scrolls and <laughs> you could forge weld something on. You could put a brass plate behind it. You, you could do a load of different things on a project like this. Make it your own. Um, really work on making it your own. Brody Yendall says that that flat stock is huge. Where do you get stock like that? Well, right now I've been getting at Alro Steel. Um, preferably, if you can find it in a scrap yard, that's the way to go. Sometimes you can buy stuff that's, um, I don't know, it was bought for a job, sold for a job, company didn't need as much, and so they just scrapped it because it was already bought for the job. Um, that's the best way, cheapest way to find it, but I've just been getting mine stuff from Alro Steel up in Alpena so far, but they're expensive. Play a cloak, Rainfall says, how would you fix a deviation in the negative space? Um, if you have a deviation in the negative space, and not just the little, like the little V shape that I've got at the bottom of mine, the only way to fix that V shape is to get your scrolls out of the way and drive it home on a radius surface that is appropriate radius for what you're looking at. Um, if you have a bunch of deviations in your negative spaces, one thing you can use is a pair of scrolling tongs, but once you've rolled up the piece to a certain degree, the scroll, you're kind of stuck with it. So uh, you want to be paying, that's why I'm saying you want to take your time and really watch it as you go around with it. Um, 
just really watch it as you're going around with it and that's how you take care of that to begin with. Otherwise, if there's a bunch of deviations or chop marks on the inside, there's not really a way of getting rid of it except for maybe filing it out um, after it's all rolled up. Or unroll and start again, but that's a nuisance uh, to have to do that. But yeah, generally once you've blocked yourself in, you're kind of, uh, you're kind of blocked in, so be careful of that. We're ready to go, let's go back to the animal. All right, okay. So now I'm gonna freeform this a little bit more. I'm gonna try to get this to arch right where I want it. This is more of a play with heat than anything else. And now I'm going to start kind of rolling that a bit more. You get a little bit more space there. And a little tighter bundle on that. A little more that way, a little more arch in it. Looks a little bit better. You can do some adjusting at this heat. It's kind of a black heat or whatever. Um, you can, you can adjust it a little bit, a little bit. Just adjust it to what your eyes find pleasing at this point. I've got to bring a little more curvature. Hopefully I can see that. I've got to bring a little bit more curvature back in here to get this where I want it. I'm going to bring a little more curvature in here without tightening it in here. So I'm going to heat this portion up, but leave this portion more cooled down. Does that make sense? What is everybody thinking so far? A um, couple of comments on the, the shape of it. They say it kind of looks like a flame, the way it yeah. bends around. Yeah, it's a flame detail. Yep. Yep. That's, that's what I was going for at the beginning of this process. Um, there's a couple different ways you could do it. So you could do it like a plumage type top. And that is appealing. Like if you're doing strap hinges, it's a different finial. It's kind of a different finial top. The way that you do a different finial top with this is if you rolled the scroll this way and out, it has a totally different look. Um, this, is, this is a flame detail. You can find this in some gate work. Um, Samuel Yellen had some work like this as well, a flame detail that rolled in and he had a flame detail that rolled out. So um, depending on what you do and the combination of scrolling that you use can give it a lot of neat, neat, neat effect. But yeah, it is consistent considered traditionally a flame detail. So, yep. Uh, yeah, they do. Uh, a Dane Rich says, best tip I have gotten from one of Roy's old videos is looking in, look in an antique store for some old tools. Found a leg vise last week for $125. Looking forward to restoring that bad boy. Awesome, that's great. It's getting harder to find leg vices for a hundred bucks or less nowadays. So a lot of them are going for 200 bucks. Some of them are going for as much as an anvil. So uh, yeah, that's awesome. Congratulations. Glad it helped you. So, all right, this is hot. Let's go over to the anvil. We'll finish this up here. All right. So now I'm going to just give this a little bit more arch. It doesn't need a lot and I don't want to go too far with this. Get that arch that I'm looking for. And this really is just a, this is kind of a finicky thing. This is more or less my artistic interpretation of what I want it to look like. You guys can do it how you, however you want. There are some rules to this, you know, of symmetrics and things of that nature. Um, some of which I'm violating, <laughs> you know, there are certain areas of this that I don't like. I wish I could have took a little extra time. I should have took a little extra time on them to get it more symmetrical, but that's the way it works. I can always just make this the bottom. <laughs> bottom piece. There's gonna be a lot going on on this frame, so that's yeah, okay. I can always clean this up a little bit more off camera, um, adjusting a few things to where they're perfect the way I want them. Just making sure it sits flush. 
and there's no concavity, no uh, concavity to it here. There you have it. What's everybody think of that type top? They really like it. It's a couple of people want to integrate it on their projects as well. Good. Most certainly do so. I'm not the one to thought of it, so <laughs> use it as much as you like. Um, so again, over here, over here, I'm going to do the same thing. One big difference is I will be tr I'll be doing it the opposite direction. So the short leg will be on the opposite side of the bar next time. So this way you get that flow through the piece. The flow looks nicer if they're on opposite sides of the bar when you're going into a vertical orientation with this. If this was a pot rack or something like that and this was the end of a pot rack, you might want them going the same direction, right? Both flowing up or both flowing down, right? If this was a pot rack, that would look really attractive. But since we're going vertical and the piece is going to be viewed like this, you need that scroll to go the opposite direction on the other end. That way it gets better flow to the piece. That is my own opinion of it. Anyways, like it, love it, hate it, put it in the comment section. Why not, right? <laughs> there it is. Hopefully everybody enjoyed that. That'll be the first part. He said, I'll work on that other portion unless everybody's like, no, I want to see the other portion. <laughs> next live stream and then we'll start on that and then maybe punch and finish out the black plate on the next live. Oh, earlier when you had asked, um, you had talked about making the chain and all the other parts. Uh, there's several people who showed interest. Uh, Ivy's Forge was one of those. Said they'd be interested in seeing the process for the entire bit. Okay, cool. Then we might, we might go that way. We might go that route. It just depends on how much interest we have over the time that we do it. Um, and uh, it might get broke up. So I have a conference that I'll be demonstrating at at the end of April, beginning of May. Um, I'll be demonstrating at BAM this year. Um, so that's going to be a, it'll be a good opportunity. I'll be doing something a lot more elaborate than this for there. I'll be doing a French Baroque style sign bracket with a lot of plumage and things of that nature. Um, a lot of scroll work with acanthus leaves. And so we'll, I'll be doing that for the demonstration there. And so we might have to work it around if it gets too long, if, it, if I can't get it done before, before then, and a six week process, then we might just take a break from it and come back to it at some point. Um, but yeah, there we go. Good, any other questions? Everyone's good? Uh, Awful people, quiet in the chat, huh? Some people, <laughs> some people are like, like they're like it's dinner time and it's night time right. and stuff like that let's give the last things away shall we yeah. you all have been patient there's been a lot of people here thank you again we'll just stay at the main camp again we'll be giving away some of these anvil stickers some of these christ center ironwork stickers thank you all for being here thank you for supporting us thank you dana maggiore for providing these we will also be giving away some of jason's forge we will be giving away one of these Tongs, one of these little copper tong things. We'll be giving them away, giving it away this stream. So thank you. Thank you, Drayson's Forge, for sending these to us. Um, that is a super sweet gift, super awesome. Of course, he's got his little touch mark on a tag here. Then we go to the camera number two. Maybe people will see him on the white backdrop. Let's see it there. He's got his little tag there with his touch mark and then some really sweet tongs there. These here look like to be bolt jaw tongs <laughs> on miniature scale. And uh, yeah, can't thank you enough. Can't thank you enough for those. Uh, super duper awesome. So we'll be giving some of these away. Let's go ahead and give away two sticker packs first, Jess. And we will go ahead and draw for those. We can go back to the main cam. What we got? All right, I landed on Rodney Hendrickson, who said me. Woohoo! Congratulations, Rodney Hendrickson. Congratulations, you got some stickers there. Get up with us through the contact link in the description. Address that sort of thing so this way we can ship this out to you. Appreciate it. Let's give away to one more. All right, this one's going to Stephen Watkins, who says, ooh, ooh, me, me, me. <laughs> Stephen Watkins, congratulations, sir. You want a sticker pack? That's awesome. 
Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for staying till the end. If you were here in the beginning, certainly appreciate it. Same thing, same drill, contact us. And then last but not least, let's give away these little pair of copper tongs, shall we? Sounds good? We shall, huh? All right, so, all right, ready? And one, two, three. All right, this one is going to Jean, Junior D who says, me, me. Hey, Junior D, congratulations. You won this little pair of copper tongs there made by Drayson's Forge. Again, Drayson's Forge, thank you. Dana Maggiore, thank you for providing the stickers for us. So this way we could give those away as door prizes. Um, congratulations to everyone who won. Again, you know how to contact us. Also, in the description will be the date. Uh, you can click on the link, go over, set a reminder for YouTube to let them know that you actually want to see the next live stream when it's posted. Um, do that and uh, maybe you'll win the next anvil we give away, which hopefully will be awesome and will bless people. So I kind of want to leave, I want to leave everybody out, out there on a good note. I hope everyone enjoyed, ho hope everyone enjoyed the stream. Um, and uh, hopefully I haven't been too sorrel, sorry of a sort in the stream this evening. Um, Jess and I, we've had a lot of extracurricular stuff going on, you know, behind the scenes and a lot of extra stressors on us that uh, has, has been something to deal with, huh, over the last two weeks. So bear with us. Uh, we are trying to, we're trying to do a lot with trying to bless people, get, do as much good as we can and help people. Um, and I hope that that's felt and I hope that that's what you guys see and, you know, that you're picking up what we're putting down there and that's not coming away with, I don't know, so, some people can take that the wrong way sometimes, huh? So, yeah, some people take me the wrong way a lot of times. <laughs> a lot of times. <laughs> so, anyways, yeah. Um, so, my final thoughts, my final th thoughts for this is time short, ladies and gentlemen, time short out there. And I really hope that you'll think about that this week and into next week and what you're doing with your time here that's precious uh, on this planet and that you'll try to go make a difference for somebody. Um, the people who have super chatted, the people who have all the great comments that are commenting in the comment section, the people who watch your videos on a regular basis, you guys really do have a big positive impact on us. You influence us a lot and uh, we, we are very thankful. We are super thankful for you and uh, we are appreciative of your time uh, that you decided to allot us here. Uh, part of your hundred years, you know, that's something to think about. <laughs> um, so, so we're very fortunate. We hope that we can just continue this whole little ride as we go throughout this year and constantly be giving back to you all. Um, I hope to continue to amp things up and up them and up them. And uh, we'll see. We'll see how the summer goes, huh? Yeah. 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 But anyways, that's it. We're going to go in. We're going to go get some dinner now. <laughs> and uh, I want to shut things down here. But thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you for being here. God bless each and every last one of you. And we'll catch you next time. Bye.